All right, so 11 o'clock, 11 one, we will start our fireside chat. Thank you all for joining us here today. Welcome to our industry first fireside chat with the CEOs of Alpian and Yapil. My name is uh, Nils Reimelt. I'm hosting the event today together with Andrea Hoffmann, who is a partner at Capco in our Zurich office. And welcome as well, of course, for to Alpian and, um, and Yapil here, to Skyler and Thomas. We call the two companies um, the fast and the serious because their team and IT setup enables them to be much faster in decision making and adapting their product to the market compared to established players. And they are serious about what they do. They are not just copycat companies, they comply with FINMA, they talk on eye level with industry players like credit card companies and payment providers. So what we have prepared for today is we start, start with three short keynotes. Uh, keynote presentations. The first one by Andrea Hoffmann will give you the Capco view on the landscape of, of neobanks, especially in Switzerland. Then Alpian and Yapil will follow with their presentations and then we go on with the fireside chat. You are invited to provide your questions anytime during the event. So they just type in that a little chat window that you should see as part of the dashboard of our video conferencing tool. Just type in your question there. We will look at it, pick some of them. We already got some via email and try to cover it during the fireside chat or in, in the Q&A session afterwards. Okay, so to kick it off, Andrea, I would hand over the mouse control to you if you like. Oh, let me see where I find you here. That's you, give keyboard and mouse. All right, hope you can start the presentation. Absolutely, thank you, um, Niels, for the introduction. Um, um, thank you, Skylar and Thomas, for attending. It's a, it's a great pleasure to, to host this um, event together with, with you guys. Uh, Niels, the, the mouse doesn't work, so maybe thank you. Um, so, as, as I introduce myself, uh, my name is Andrea Hoffmann, a senior partner at Capco Switzerland, and I would like to start with a quick, um, of course, a quick overview about Capco. You might not um, know us yet. We are a global management and tech consulting company. We are focusing solely on financial services and, and trading business. And we are since um, over 20 years um, in the business with um, more than 5,000 consultants globally. In Switzerland, uh, we are over, um, uh, if you would go to the next page, news, please. We are over 120 consultants um, based in Geneva with about um, 20 and in Zurich with about 100 um, people. We serve probably all the major banks, but as well um, smaller uh, financial services institutions. And our operating, which you see in, in, in the center, is um, obviously aligned to the market and our client, client needs, and um, it includes transformation solutions, it includes regulatory, data and technology, and, and digital. But now let me, let me uh, give a quick overview on um, or our view on the neobank developments in, in Switzerland. Um, again, CAP has a history in working closely with big and small banks and neobanks in the retail and private banking industry. We recently published, published a, a mobile banking uh, benchmarking study comparing international and Swiss banks with neobanks. Um, and we got a lot of um, resonance out of that. If you now look at the landscape of neobanks in Switzerland today, and I'm excluding crypto banks and payment services like Apple Pay, we all know that it really started in the retail space with probably the, uh, the international player Revolut entering the, the Swiss markets again about two -ish years ago. Then in 2019, we saw the entry of N26, 
And we saw the launch of two Swiss retail smartphone banks that we call first generation new banks. Doc is, um, is partnering with Frank Claire, and Neon is backed um, by a partnership with uh, Hüppi Landsburg. Both of them do not have their own banking license. Now, what's, what we see happening, and you read it in the press, is the emerge of a second generation um, of challenge, challenger banks that go beyond retail. The appeal has a, has a fintech license and calls itself API first, and we'll learn about that a bit more. Um, supporting, for example, Bank Phone Tobel with their onboarding technology. The appeal went live uh, in July with a big community of more than, um, I think, a thousand alpha testers already using the app, including myself. Um, Alpion, on the other side, applied for full bank full banking license and will start next year as the first digital wealth manager in Switzerland, uh, and we're looking forward to that. And another example is Flowbank, offering an investment and trading platform operating under a full um, banking license. So the second generation neobanks have a focus topic and they go beyond retail. Soon, and we also read that in the press, we'll see new market entrants from established banks, banks like um, CSX from um, Credit Suisse, for example. And we will then find out if they go beyond retail as well or just copy the first generation new banks. Now, on the next slide, uh, I want to quickly, on a high level, depict what are the characteristics and the differentiations. Um, of the second generation new banks. On one side, um, we, see, we see several advancements compared to the first generation of new banks. All digital banks have a, a focus on, on um, good usability. But um, to be honest, uh, often the, the support is uh, unresponsive. Customers are experiencing um, interruption in the process and manual interaction is still needed uh, and, and therefore slows down the, the entire um, process and, and also the experience. Originally, the, the mantra was um, mobile first. And a year ago, we did, um, we, we did speak about smartphone banks. Now, we probably see more um, API first approach. What does that, what does that mean? Uh, on one hand, interfaces to software as a service um, have matured and can basically you can basically build um, a bank just, um, just using APIs to third-party providers that connect to a very very lean core banking. On the other side, um, new banks are exposing their APIs to an ecosystem that integrates, for example, payment services into specific use cases. So key differentiators, therefore, related to these new characteristics, and um, I see the following. The, uh, the customer experience without process break, a modern technology stack to innovate fast, and the flexible pricing engine that allows New Bank to basically set the price per transaction. Of course, um, there are a lot of challenges for new banks. Um, usually, um, less income per customer since new banks at this point of time are just the second bank relationship. Um, other than that, um, they start from zero. So new banks have not a um, long-standing customer base like uh, traditional banks. And last but not least, um, the challenge to build long-term trust, the long-term trust, which I personally still believe is key to any banking. So having said that, I would um, like to close my introduction and my view, and I would again welcome uh, the CEOs of Alpha and the Appeal, Skyler and Thomas very much. Can I hand over to you, Niels, please? Yes, thank you very much, Andrea, for, for this insightful introduction. It's now the turn of Alpian to continue, and I would like to welcome Skylar Weiss, 
Skyler is CEO and founder of Alpian, a digital private bank. We will hear more about Alpian in a minute. Skyler has two citizenships, uh, American and the Swiss nationality. He started his career in New York at IBM and later joined Morgan Stanley. And there in the wealth management division, he became, I think, the youngest vice president and was working on a huge project to reduce the processing time of the client services department. And then he left Morgan Stanley to move over to Switzerland to get an MBA from the IMD University in Lausanne. And after graduation, he joined private bank Rail in Geneva as a project manager and then soon took over uh, the role as chief digital officer at Rail. He modernized the e-banking platform, advisory process and so on. And finally started to work on, on the concept what later became Alpian. Uh, for several years now, I would say Skylar is, is being convinced by the idea to, to democratize investments and private banking services and, and that this could be delivered uh, by a technology driven bank, right? And during our involvement uh, in the early days of Alpian and Andrea, you will agree, we learned uh, that Skyler is a person with high ambitions and standards towards himself and others. And in, in his own words, uh, he not only intended to build a new bank, he, he intends to build the future of private banking and uh, or the Tesla of private banking, which we like this ambition. So Skylar, welcome, and I, I hand over the control to you. Sure. Well, look, I'd like to thank you for, for having me here today. Uh, it's a pleasure to participate, and I'm happy to go through throughout in, uh, what we're doing, where we're going, and, and what we stand for as a company. So I think it's important to, to, to realize that um, at Alpin, and as we could just go to the next slide, the clicker is not working. At Alpian, it's not just our focus to, to introduce a new bank, but it's also to introduce a new way of, of banking. Um, and when I say that, there are plenty of banks out there in the market. What's important is to, to give people an understanding of what we do differently and what we stand for as a company. What is our purpose as a company? And this idea of true wealth, this is something that we, we put at the heart of, of our offering. And so I think that this is best summarized by asking the question, when you, when you put money into a bank account uh, and, and you want to grow that money, do you, are you looking to grow the, the money or are you looking to grow your wealth? Uh, and by saying that, I mean, do you look at, uh, are you looking to grow the number of, of franc in your account or are you looking to grow your, your true wealth? Uh, are you looking to grow the possibility that having more wealth can bring to you. And that wealth comes in many different forms. If you could go to the next slide, Niels. So one of the ways that we enable this idea of true wealth is by demystifying the investment process and democratizing wealth management. So really bringing clarity to this idea of, of investing and then bringing access to that to select uh, products and services to a broader range of clients than 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 have than have access to that uh, those services today, and so this is how we're we're looking to bring that true wealth, identify, partner with each client, identify what true wealth means to them, and help them achieve that true wealth. So if you go to the next slide. So one way of, of doing this is we actually combine both technology and also the the the, the human element, right? Human, the, the technology can only go so far. We need to combine both the, the latest and the most modern technologies with really bright, really intelligent, really hardworking individuals who can complement the technology and offer that personalized uh, and, and incredible service to the end client. And so this is something that we're building on right now. And this is how part of the way that we will deliver this true wealth. And then lastly is, is the values of Alpian. So what I think is important to note, and this is what Niels touched on earlier, is that trust lies at the foundation of, of banking. And if you, if you don't have trust with each and every client, um, then you've, you've, you've failed in one of, the massive, uh, one of the massive promises that each bank should make to each client. And so trust lies in everything that we do. So whether it, it be in the technology that we build, the people that we hire, the processes that we take, 
trust lies at the core. Innovation is also a very important part of what we do at Opkin. We always push to, to, whenever we think about how we innovate, it's how can we better serve the end client? How can we better meet the end client's needs? And we try to innovate in ways that always improve the, the processes and the, the, the sense of, of, of belonging that the end client has. And that's the human. Um, we really want to personalize the experience of Alpine. It's not enough to just offer a great service with great technology. You really need to make it personal for each person. And so these are some of the things that, that we really put at the core of, of, of our company. And as we as we develop and as we get better and better, we, we, we maintain these values. These are things that will never disappear. So just to give you some sense of the pillars of, uh, of Alpian, um, yes, I don't know if the, yeah. So just, just to give you a sense of the, the, the actual issue that Alpian is looking to address. But right now what we found is that there's two segments of the market. You have the retail banking uh, segment and then you have the private banking segment. And um, these segments address their clientele very well. Uh, but what we found is that if you if you fit into this mass affluence segment, which we'll define as people with between 100,000 and a million of liquid net worth, if they walk into a private bank, that private bank may not be willing to serve them because they don't have enough wealth, or they may serve them, but then the, the, the fees that you pay are too high. And so you're probably not going to go to private banks. If you go to a retail bank with 200,000 franc, the retail bank will accept you as a client, but then they'll treat you as every other as every other client that they have at the retail bank. What we want to do is drive additional value and additional services for this mass affluent segment within Switzerland and really help this mass affluent segment uh, create and, and build true wealth with that person. So this is uh, this is the opportunity, this is the problem that we've identified. And the next slide, we'll go into how we solve this. So we have four pillars of our offering. The first is um, we have partnered with Rail to offer private banking services to the mass affluent population. And the way that we do that is we combine a very personalized, very human uh, interaction. Uh, it's, it's done through digital me a digital medium, but it's actually a human interaction and, and we, we streamline that to allow for us to offer discretionary management uh, to, to our run through a private bank rail to our affluent clientele. Secondly, is we, we've curated and we're, we are continue to curate a list of select products that we put onto our platform and that we distribute through our platform, which clients will be able to access. This is our investment boutique. Uh, third is where we really introduce that human element. You'll be able to have a video call with Alpian advisors who are based here in Switzerland and, and, and employees of Alpian who will help you understand what true wealth means to you and help you achieve that true wealth and go on the journey with you from today, from going from point A to point B, where you are today and where you want to go. And then lastly, we've realized that it's important to offer the everyday banking services that, that that everybody needs. So things like payments, things like debit cards, things like foreign exchange, we have incorporated these in a very simple and intuitive and cost-effective way into Alpian's uh, offering. I won't go through each of the points on the right, but it's important to note that we've, we've woven many different aspects, uh, whether that be simplicity or impact or fairness and transparency into the offering of Alpian. And when you look at it as a whole, you see that this is really designed to meet the needs of, of each and every client that Alpine has and to help deliver that true wealth and that understanding of, of what it is that Alpine offers. So as a last slide, you know, so yeah. just to give everybody, yeah. just to give everybody just a brief understanding of, of, of Alpine as a company. So just the, the technicals, it's, we are a Swiss financial technology company that has applied to become a fully licensed Swiss bank um, as, as any other bank in, in Switzerland, which means that we will be licensed by FIDMA uh, when they grant us the license, if they grant us the license, uh, as you would see at, at many of the, the mainstay banks that you find in Switzerland. Um, 
we were incubated initially by Raylan Sias, as uh, Niels has mentioned, which is a, a Swiss private bank that has been in the market for over 40 years and ha has a tremendous track record within Switzerland and abroad. And so I think what, what I'm trying to say here is that we've combined both the, the, the tradition of Swiss private banking by having been incubated by a Swiss private bank, as well as a new modern approach by in including technologies and new processes. And so we've tried to combine the best of both worlds to meet the, meet the client's needs and help them achieve true wealth. On the right, you can see some of the key milestones that, that we've achieved as a company. Many milestones to come, much work to do going forward. Uh, but we have a great team here at Alpin that, that's really catered to, that's really working towards making sure that we, we meet every client's need. Yeah, thank you very much, Skylar. It's a, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. And I think this the merge of, of technology and the service culture going forward will be very interesting to, to feel next year. Thank you so much. Um, now we come to, I, to the last. Sorry, Neil, can I yeah. sneak in one question? Because it's uh, almost an obvious one uh, and, and it came through and uh, otherwise I will hold back. But um, Skylar, obvious question. What will the merger of rail with Intesa mean for Alpian? Maybe just uh, one sentence on that one. Sure. So look, Alpine has its own governance structure. It has its, it's an independent uh, entity, uh, which is independent of rail. Rail is still a large uh, stakeholder and shareholder of, of Alpine, but Alpine has its own board and its own governance structure to, to run itself. Now with Intesa, you can see that there are potential synergies with, with the fourth largest entity in, in Europe. Um, and, and there are a lot of possibilities which, which I think it's, it's a, only to everybody's benefit to explore. Now, again, these are independent companies, but I think if anything, it opens up a door of opportunity that otherwise we would not have had. Yeah, thank you, Andrea, for picking this up. All right, then we come to, to the last keynote presentation for today. Welcome, Thomas. Um, CEO and co-founder of Yapir, Thomas Hildendorf. Thomas did grow up in Switzerland, uh, has a background in, in economics and IT. Uh, he started his career as software developer like myself and then moved on into the banking industry, managing projects with Credit Suisse and uh, SIX and being responsible as a managing director at Raiffeisen for the new core banking platform. And it sounds like to me, Thomas, that you collected a lot of ideas back then already about how a modern core banking should be designed. <laughs> Today, Thomas' focus is 100% Yapil, but uh, before starting Yapil, he co-founded a couple of other companies. He already had his first exit as well when you sold Safe Swiss Cloud to everywhere. Nice one, and um, is a very active uh, business angel and entrepreneur. And uh, so you you know software development, you know banking, you know consulting because of your time at four executives, and you are familiar with fintech through your business angel activities and board membership. So I would say that's the perfect fit to run Yapil. <laughs> we are excited to hear more about Yapil and I'm, I'm handing over to you. I will switch the slides to just guide me. Okay, thank you very much, Niels, for having me. Thank you for the opportunity to present um, Yapil. Um, there's one thing missing, you know, you should know how you get clients and that's the journey we are <laughs> we are going on now. Very interesting. What is What are the clients or what are the banking clients looking for the future? We hope we can address in the retail banking area what they need for the future and I'm happy to give you an insight of what we are doing. I have prepared two slides. The first one is more the outside in that you can see what's going on inside from your peel. This is maybe not, not well known or not good known for, for a lot of you. We'll start with this one. Um, our so-called house of your peel, for sure, we have the upstairs on top in the roof. These are our clients. Then we have um, three strategic pillars um, we built on our house. I will explain them more in detail. Um, soon, um, this is the pillar of the community, then the whole stuff around the value chain of um, your peel and, and, and the technology. Um, all this is based on, on the appeal team. Um, 
Yeah, as you can see on the, on, on the left side of this slide, um, the community was from day one or before already very important for us because um, we try hard to build what the community is um, asking us to build, not only in respect of function and features, also about uh, in respect of um, usability, convenience of the whole thing. And um, on the other hand, we make the community part of uh, our journey. We have a lot of uh, shareholders out of our community and we will go on, will we go on into the market um, January, February with a, with a community funding round that um, yeah, the appeal is really backed by, by the community. That's our, our main goal. Then in respect of the value chain, this is for us a very important pillar. Um, in respect of uh, independency of um, third parties, um, we call this economy of scope. We are concentrating on the whole value chain to get all the needed licenses by our own. So we are issuing our own visa debit card. Um, we have the FINMA license, the FinTech license, which is quite nice for us, supports us a lot. And um, yeah, we have our, our own um, SNB um, Jira account. We are integrated in the domestic payment scheme via SIG. All this uh, is very important for us to be agile, to make the decisions very quickly if needed. And again, that we are independent from third parties. I think this um, is one of our major assets we have. And the other is the technology. We decided from the beginning on that we will be cloud native. We only have laptops and screens. Everything else is in the cloud, um, hosted in Switzerland for sure. And um, on the other hand, the, the other important thing is that we are digital to the core, means everything is real time doesn't matter if um, any interaction is on the on the mobile and and, and you, are, you you do payments or payments come in for you you see everything in real time booked on your current account and um, yeah this is um, I think the thing which makes us very fast and yeah clients need that um, few words about the team we found that with, um, I think that's not typic typically which, uh, what startups are doing normally. We found it with 12 co-founders and the three board members, they are also co-founders, so 15 co-founders. Um, this is not always easy for sure, but um, it gives you a lot of advantages. For example, each of our co-founders, they are they have an intrinsic motivation to, to bring this baby up and running. And um, the other thing is that we, um, from beginning on, we had a, um, a large base of good experience and, and uh, we are located in Altstetten, all in the same office, at least before Corona, now it's quite a, a different situation. But this helps us to have a, really a good speed in making decisions to discuss problems and so on. So this is a, a bit from outside in to your appeal. If you can switch to the next slide, please, Nils, then I can give you an in, some information about the, the inside out view. So um, for us, it was clear from the day one on that we just sell or offer services and no products. Um, this means that we have a flat fee for the service and the client or the, the upsters, they always know what they get for their money. Um, we try hard to cover needs outside in the market, raising up from our community. And um, there are points like um, a fast onboarding. Onboarding at several banks in Switzerland is still, is still a nightmare, it takes many days and a lot of papers. Um, your appeal has an onboarding which is done in less than 10 minutes on the mobile, no paper needed. Um, for sure, 
the convenient presentation of the services, this is, is very important. And we believe that if we are not able to, to convince our yobsters by a convenient way of, of your appeal, we will lose them or we will not win them. So this is very important for us. Flat fee I addressed already. Um, and I think the main challenge is not only for your appeal for all banking services which are around is how to integrate in a changing digital world. You know, it's I, I do not believe that um, that's the bank or financial services which have to define and design the services which are needed in the digital world. The digital world will tell us what's needed from a payment service point of view or other, other things. Um, mentioned before already, we are 24 seven real time. Um, there are features, um, there's a demand for features like micro payments also in Switzerland. Um, all these are um, needs we see. Um, we get yeah, the demands from other companies in this respect and the appeal will build this functionality to help our jobs as our clients to be very agile in the in the digital world. Um, maybe beyond of payment stuff, um, we are very much concentrating on our financial amigo, which um, helps clients for financial health. Um, not like um, Skyler presented before, <laughs> we address um, a client um, segment which is not so wealthy and um, they are they are very often to get some support how to manage um, their financial service their, their financials in a better way. Um, another thing we are con we are concentrating on is um, the family shizzle and also joint accounts. So your appeal will offer not only one account per client, also um, different accounts are possible. And um, the lifestyle stuff, that's something which will come up also in 21. The, the last point is um, we believe strongly in ecosystems. That's something um, we realize we got requests for, from companies outside um, the banking area asking for the possibilities of um, yeah, these new payment functionalities we are offering and, and there we are working on very, very interesting um, ecosystems, ecosystem functionalities we will come out in 21 with um, one announcement we did already that we partnered with Sunrise. So this may be the last slide is just to give you our motivation when you can switch Niels, please. That's what we are hardly working on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas. Really, really nice to summarize that on, on two tailored slides for today. And it already sounds like some announcements uh, included there. And yesterday I got my, my appeal card. Um, but I am, on the other hand, I think do we, do we really still need a card uh, or yet another card? So let's uh, move on to the to the fireside chat. Um, let me see. Uh, we can probably leave that that uh, slide open. Um, so we have a couple of questions, as I said, that already came in via email and put together something. So I wanted to start with, like, I mean, building some something new is always very exciting. And then from us, from the financial service industry, building a new bank is probably super exciting. So for for you both, what is the most exciting about building a second generation neobank? Perhaps you can shortly capture your main spirit about this. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'll start. Um, so look, I think that there are, are two elements. I, I, I won't name one. I think there are two elements uh, of this. You know, the first is, um, is the client. I think, um, you know, seeing it, an opportunity to better better serve the client or serve the client in a different way, um, you know, this is this is my primary motivation. Uh, it's something where I, I do think that 
at Alpian, uh, we're not meant for everybody, and it's something that, uh, that that we do recognize. Not every client is the right fit for, for Alpian, but for the clients that are the right fit, you know, we want to be the best bank for them. And to see that satisfaction come out in the end, it's something that we're working towards. Um, you know, it's something that every day as, as we're building this bank, we're, we're thinking towards. Um, and, and I think that, you know, in my life, the, the best moments I've had have been where you see, you know, you see the work that you've done and you see the impact that that has had on, on other people. And so my goal is to put the smile and, and put the happiness and put the true wealth in every client that we serve. This is, uh, this is what I'm working towards. The other aspect is the team. At Alpine, we have a, we have a great team. It's something where I, I very much appreciate and, and enjoy working with them. And we're very fortunate to have, uh, you know, have this great internal team, but as well as the extended team from, from rail and from our, from our partners uh, and everybody that we work with. Uh, you know, we have, we have built a great ecosystem of, of the team and, and it's something that, that gives me a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, joy and a lot of um, excitement and, and energy to keep pushing it forward. Great. I mean, that's similar at, at your peer, right, Thomas, the team is small and powerful. What, what is your biggest excitement about? I mean, you built already a couple of players and even uh, fintechs, so what is your driver? To build a new bank it's very easy you know working for for incumbent banks for many years you know and and always um telling what you are not happy with you know what the bank should be should do in another way you know at some times it's the point um you just have to say do it yourself you know and that's um, what 12 people and the board did in uh, 2018 you know so that was our motivation. We have seen a lot, as you mentioned already in your intro, and um, the time was there to yeah, to try at least to do it uh, in a better way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Bill Gates once said, banking is, is necessary and important, but banks are not. So do we really need new banks? <laughs> what is there? Your... Yeah, you know, I just can give you the, the, the example from, from um, from Aiden Financials, you know, from Alibaba, you know, they started with a they started with an e e shop, then they they grow grown up to an uh, ecosystem, and 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 just by the way, you know, one of the ten largest banks was uh, founded and built. You know, this is really impress impressive. You know, so for me, this this example shows you that. Banking has to listen to the market, you know, what the what the SMEs, what the companies need and, and, and what the clients need. And then they have just to deliver what is requested by the market, you know, and and um, yeah, that's the way we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, of well, course, I, and, uh, yeah, Skyla, you're, I'm not, no, no, I, I wanted to, to give over to you. I mean, for retail, it's more tougher the question than for, for private banks that we don't have so many digital private banks. Skyla, please. Yeah, I mean, look, at Alpine, our, our, our goal is not to replace or crush other banks, right? That, that's not uh, a center goal. We do see a need for, for improvement, and we do see that, uh, that there is room to improve in the financial services, but it's not our goal to, to compete with other banks. As you said before, I have high standards for Alpine and, and where it needs to go. What we internally refer to them as is the Alpine standards. So Alpine has set its own standards, and it's irregardless of the other uh, players in the market. We set standards based on what we think uh, and where we think the, the, the financial services industry, industry should go. And so it's not, um, you know, we don't base it off of, off of historical uh, events or uh, off of, uh, you know, what, what other banks are doing. We base it off of where we know that things should go. And so we set our own, our own Alpine standards and we work towards those. I mean, of course, uh, you know, new players in the market drive innovation and change the the incumbents. Let's say so. That's that's a definitely a good thing. So, what what if you say is the regulator doing a good job to open the market for new players? It would be interesting to know how do you see yeah, that I think FINMA, FINMA I think, supporting yeah, you. I think, yeah, FINMA has done an excellent job of 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 of, of you know 
opening the possibility for, for new banks to enter. Now, I say that with a caveat because becoming a bank, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a rigorous process, as it should be. It's not something that any, anybody can do. It's something that you really have to put in place the right measures, the right controls, uh, the right processes to make sure that you do banking responsibly and, and, and to, the, to the extent that, um, that the, the Swiss regulator FINMA has said. And so they've made it possible and they've opened up an opportunity for companies to, to become banks, but it's only for companies that, that are willing to put in the time and the effort and, and the resources to actually adhere to the, the standards that FINMA has set. And so at Alpian, it's something where you know, we, we aim to, to, to not just meet, but exceed FINMA standards. And, and you know, hopefully um, in the near future, we're granted a banking license. But again, that's something that, that uh, we're going through with FINMA and it is up to them. Uh, and, and we want to work with them to achieve that status. And Thomas, for you, is if you have a if FINMA would have dialed in, do you have an ask to them or are you happy so far? We are we are very happy, you know. We are, I think it was a bit special because um the fintech license was for both the first time they did this process, you know. Um both have been very interested and and, and it was it yeah, it was really very comfortable. It was not easy, <laughs> for sure not. Um, what we can say is on, on the on the side of uh, um, KYC, AML, and all this stuff. You know, we are one to one what banks have to deliver. You know, there's there's nothing. There's no fast track for fintechs. Also, this is really uh, comparable with um, what banks have. A colleague of mine is working in a, in a cantonal bank, and the AML policies of them are 50 pages. Ours is 60 pages. You know, so. <laughs> um, um, but what FIMA we also a have quality to... gate, no, in a way, FIMA is a quality gate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and the quality gate is similar to what you have to do when you get for or when you apply for a bank banking license. Um, what we for sure have to say is that our business models, and I guess Tyler also your one, is still a conventional business model. You know, there are no ICOs, there are no cryptocurrencies, it's still fiat based and so on. So um, from this point of view, we are still in line with the conventional conventional rules. Um, mm -hmm. But we are quite happy. We have really very good relation to, to, to FINMA and, and um, we are happy with them. Yeah. What would you what would you consider a disruptive innovation for the Swiss financial marketplace, let's say, and for the user or one of the one of the sites, it would be what is already disruptive. What we are doing, you mean, or I mean, you know, what we discussed, uh, for example, the the IBAN uh, already that uh -huh. changing the okay. IBAN to you know <laughs> disruptive is <laughs> yeah, already you... not very small, you know. <laughs> yeah. Those okay. I, I can the audience. Some... Yeah, some examples we we faced with our new features we yeah, we deployed. What what um, your appeal is offering that you can define your own, your own IBAN number. And um, so my one, for example, is uh, um, grab grab the stars, you know. And um, the issue we faced, and and a lot of our yapsers they liked it, and and. Uh, and and build their own IBAN. What we faced is that not all banks have been when we launched this feature. Not all banks um, haven't been able to to receive IBANs in this um, in this way. This was really funny that um, you are fully based on standards, you know, but the banks uh, um, cannot um, accept this. So I think this are you. I know I'm not sure if this is disruptive, but it's kind of different what the banking area is working today, and and some surprises we faced when we when we launched new features. Sure. So Andrea is jumping in. I think some questions <laughs> came up. <laughs> I um, thanks a lot for for um, this conversation so far. I'm trying to sneak in a couple of. We have uh, several questions coming in online. I'm trying to summarize uh, some of them um, because in, in both to uh, Yapil and Alpian, uh, if I summarize it, it's a two-folded question. What's your future view or path um, in with regard to expansion? One side, geography-wise, 
you plan to go beyond Switzerland and on the other side, um, um, serve product or service wise. Can you, can you elaborate a bit on what you're planning to do? Sure, so I'll start with that. And, and before I do, uh, Thomas, I just want to congratulate you on your, on your FinTech license. That is a big achievement and, and I think it warrants a, a tremendous congratulations because I know how much work it takes to, to actually achieve that. Uh, now to address your point, Andrea, um, how, how Alpine, how we at Alpine look at this is that, um, you know, we are a Swiss bank first and foremost, which means that uh, we see the Swiss market at, as our primary focus and, and our only focus at the moment. And we want to make sure that every client within Switzerland who is a client of Alpian gets a service that, to the standard that we've set to this Alpian standard. And, um, and, and this journey of helping each client achieve true wealth is not something that you just start and then you just you just go on autopilot the rest of the rest of the time. It's something where you have to build that journey with them and it takes time, it takes focus and it takes resources. So what I'd say is that before we ever consider expanding abroad, our, our first priority is to make sure that the, the, the population of Switzerland who, who decides to partner with Alpian, that we demonstrate that same commitment to them and that we partner with them to the same extent to help them achieve true wealth. Now, this is a problem that doesn't just exist in Switzerland. And so it's something where the rest of the world has a, a portion of the market that is either underserved or overpriced, and, and they're looking to achieve true wealth as well. This, um, this is not our focus at the moment, but again, we will at some point in the future uh, review, um, review this. And, but the criteria to even review it is that in Switzerland, we have done everything to the extent that we can to, to help our clients achieve true wealth. Now, from a product offering perspective, I see that there are many areas of, for expansion. So, um, you know, we, we, um, we want to listen to the client. This is something that Thomas brought up before. It's something that we already do. So at the beginning of, of the conception of Alpine, we did this, this market research with, with uh, Niels and with Andrea. And, um, and, and we listened to the clients. And ever since we, we did that, we've been running these, uh, this market research where we go and we talk to people every week to find out what are the things that they want and what are the things that they need and what are the things that they're looking for, what are the things that they're unhappy about. And so we, as we expand our product offering, it's really going to be informed by, by the clients. It's not just going to be a, we have a roadmap and then on, on this day we release this. It's something that you know, we will adjust um, we have ideas for what areas we can help the client in. It's all aligned with this idea of generating true wealth. But again, it's going to be informed by the client because at the end of the day, um, when we want to generate true wealth by partnering with our clients, it's something that um, needs to be done in partnership with the client, not just uh, on our end. Okay, perhaps adding to this and Thomas, then you can answer. I think you build a very lean uh, technology platform in, in terms of cost. Yeah? So there's a totally different cost structure compared to established banks. So you could scale that, you go to the US market and it would still still work nicely. So the appeal is instead an ambition to to enter other countries or because the Swiss market is small and there you cannot really leverage this economies of scale. So there's a fintech license. Huh? <laughs> yeah, please. I can give you an official answer, you know, based on our our valid current strategy. Um, and this is Switzerland B2C market, and that's what we are focusing on. Um, for sure, um, we have several talks in respect of ecosystems, um, which uh, will bring up, uh, I guess, new business models um, in the market. And um, yeah, and, and thinking loud, you know, um, for sure we have some talks about uh, going abroad, you know, um, but this is not yet um, our strategy. This is, let's say, in preparation to maybe, um, yeah, make yeah, first do homework first here, you. right? Then, then exceed. Absolutely, yeah. We need traction now in Switzerland. Our we need a proven business model in Switzerland. Um, preparing other things um, in parallel and then, then launching them next year. Yeah. Okay, Andrea, anything else Thank from you? Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, uh, another one, I think it's a, a good one, and I'm personally interested um, to hear it from you. What's your view, not ours or others, what's your view, who is your competition within Switzerland or beyond? Again, both, of course, to both uh, Thomas and Skyler. Actually, for me, it's easy to answer, you know, it, this, these are the incumbents, you know. The incumbents, they are still strong. If they are doing the right steps, they are hard competition for us. Um, some of them will do, I'm quite sure, but I'm also quite sure some of them will miss the opportunity they have actually, you know. But um, for me, it's not not uh, it's not N26 or Evolut that the competition. For me, it's uh, the, the Swiss incumbents. These are the, our competition. And we just saw here from Vero CSX, right? Credit Suisse did the silent launch, I think yesterday or so. And coming out end of, of the month with CSX, their new lean bank offering, this this would be probably a competition for your peer as well, right? Yeah, and you have seen what happened on a, on a, on a card ethics area, you know, everybody came down when when fintechs um, announced that they will have no uplifts on, on, on the ethics courses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this leads me a bit to the question, should the basic bank account, and you both are offering a basic bank account at the end, then should that be free or not? Uh, what, what is your opinion on, on this? Skyler, perhaps. Yeah. So, just to address, uh, Andrea, your initial question, which is who is the, uh, who is the competitor? I, I agree that the incumbents are the competitor, but, but for a different reason. So, when I think about competition, uh, it's not, you know, I, I don't see it as, as uh, Alpine versus another uh, competitor. I think that we're building an ecosystem here and we can each uh, support the, the construction of that ecosystem, which is digital banking. And, um, and when I look at, you know, competition, what I, what I think about is, is this idea of trust. Right? Where does trust lie within the Swiss banking market? And, um, and Thomas is correct in that the incumbents have a tremendous amount of trust with their clientele. Uh, you see a lot of continental banks where when we listen to market research, we hear that people, when they're five and when they're 40 years old, they have the same bank account. Now, that's that's a lot of trust that to go on that journey with somebody. My, my feedback to that is when you're five and when you're 40, you have different needs. So you should have a different bank account. And so what we at Alpine can do is, is is meet those needs, but also we need to build that trust with each of these people. And so, um, you know, the, the clients that decide to join Alpine, you know, the first thing that we want to do with them is build trust because we know that that lies at the, the, at the foundation of, of banking. Um, I mean, this I is, mean, uh, this is Skyler, Skyler to, to build on this, um, I have heard from, from Starling in, in UK from the CUN that they say after eight weeks, people switch over to Starling and use it as the main bank relationship. So it's a bit what, what would be your expectation about um, people switching over to the appeal and using it as a, as a main bank relationship? Is that uh, part of your business case or is that more, yeah? Whether it's Alpine or appeal, I mean, look, I think that um, you know, building trust is not an overnight exercise. It's something that takes time, and it's something that you have to do every time you, you work with the client, whether they they realize it or not. In the background, everything needs to be designed to build that trust. Um, so this is something that I don't see as an eight, eight week journey. I see it as a, as a longer journey. Um, but I, what we want to do is is introduce who Alpine is, right? What what do you feel when you hear Alpine, so that people understand what Alpine stands for? Open, uh, you know, join us, become a partner of Alpine, and then we start that trust building exercise. So I, I don't expect it to be in eight weeks. I, I think it'll be a, a long journey. Um, but, but the goal is to build trust with each and every partner starting from uh, just a little bit of trust and then demonstrating to them every time we interact with them that uh, that we are there to support them and that's our only goal. Okay, Thomas, your view on becoming the main bank relationship. I mean, you said already you have a other target group um, that, that probably is easier to, to switch over. Yeah? Yeah, but I, I think this is a central central goal of um, of uh, your appeal to become at the end of the day 
um, the account where the salary of, uh, of our clients comes every month because based on that um, we can help the client um, most knowing all his transaction you know we can run our AI stuff uh, our financial amigo and we can help help him um I, i'm also not so not so sure if this is done in eight weeks <laughs> um but uh, my answer normally to this question is uh, where in the past you know where should clients go to the next bank you know that the the offerings they are looking quite similar and 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 getting something some bits um some percentage are cheaper you know this 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 is not what the clients are looking for the clients are looking for a new experience um, in in the relationship with their bank that's what we believe banking clients are getting tired you know with 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 their incumbent banks today and that's the chance for for us um, fintechs you know to to offer things smoother smarter um more quick real time this is what what clients are looking for for the future and um this is the challenge for the incumbents and i think the the opportunity and um, the window of opportunity um fintech as we are it's a uh, quite good mm -hmm. so the time is uh, running unfortunately some question came in uh, please speak about products and offering of alpian <laughs> Andre, you saw it skyler if you want to quickly um say something about uh, double click a bit on on the lpn offering sure so look um you know the the the, the offering is not one thing uh, i'll go through the different pillars again so um you know one of the the, the main pillars that again everything we do is to, to achieve this idea of, of true wealth so for example um we we offer this discretionary management service which means that um when you want to invest a lot of people they they, they don't have the time or they don't have the knowledge or that the experience with investing and so sometimes they want somebody else to do it for them and sometimes they want somebody to help them do it and we offer both of those uh, those options so discretionary management is where you have somebody you, you give uh, the money into this account and then somebody will invest your money for you. And we've partnered with Rail, a private bank here in Geneva, a very well established uh, entity. Um, and their private banking discretionary management team will be managing the money that's in the Alpine account. So what I mean by that is you are getting a private banking service by being a client at Alpin from a private banking account, uh, from a, a private bank, an established private bank in Geneva. So this is one of the offerings that we have. Yeah, in addition, a unique setup. Uh, it's yeah. okay, it's kind of because it's already uh, 59. Sure. I think we have sure. to kind of uh, last questions, kind of wrap up or, I mean, from my side, I would say, what is, what is your like crazy prediction for, for the next five years, you both, but perhaps Andrea, you have some, some more important topic from the list? No, Ben, we have uh, plenty of questions and, and uh, yeah. you know, um, uh, both probably Thomas uh, and Skylar as well, uh, Niels and Saif uh, would be open for further discussion. It's it's very interesting. Um, the question we was just going to ask Niels um, is indeed one of the ones uh, um, coming in online. So so please, let's, let's take this as a closing one. Yeah, perhaps a future prediction or trend you see What's coming in the next years? Thomas, you want to? Yeah, it, it's hard to, to make prediction for the next five years, but um, what, what we, what we, yeah, maybe this, 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 this answer will be a little bit uh, astonishing you because it's not related to the, to the retail <laughs> banking market, but what we see is that as a next hot topic, um, the, the digitization of the SME market will, will, this will be very hot from next year on. Um, that's what we see because, um, yeah, we get requests from outside the market. Um, and yeah, ecosystems, ecosystems, it's, it's a buzzword, I know, but, um, digitization, um, offers a lot of new opportunities, new business models, um, which, which, yeah, incumbent banks cannot offer today with their legacy systems, unfortunately, but it, it, it's the reality. 
and and the demand on 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 the market side will will raising up you know for new digital business models that's that's what we see we we have a lot of um talks about that and 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 um i'm quite sure you will see nice things next year from your appeal but for sure also from others thank you skyler some thing in your mind about the future yeah, I think it's something we've already addressed today, and it's something that both the Appeal and Alpine are working on. Um, you know, I think one of the key focuses for 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 Alpine and the Appeal, it sounds, is that uh, it's to understand, you know, where where does the client want to go? Uh, it's to understand more about them and where do, where they are today and where they want to go, and how can we help them get there? And so. It doesn't sound revolutionary, but but the way in which you do it, I think that there will be a lot of advancement in the way that you gain an understanding of, of your clients um, and how you're able to, to register that understanding and then map that path, chart that path forward for how do you help the client get to where they want to go. And, and when I'll also react morning, to that quickly. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, and then and, and 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 then if you understand that, you need to react quickly, right? To create uh, to yeah. adapt your product, and this this some established players are not not able to do as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I would say it's past twelve. Um, would be would be nice to continue. Thank you so much for for joining today. Thank you all to for listening. Still fifty people dialed in. Impressive, Andrea. Some closing words from your side. Also from my side, it was an excellent interaction. Thanks a lot for the many questions, but uh, again, most um, uh, mostly thank you, um, Niels, for orchestrating, moderating this, uh, and and, uh, and and Skyler and Thomas. It was a real pleasure. Thank you for for sharing um, some interesting thoughts and information with us and for participating participating and again if anybody uh, wants to have a, a, a specific follow-up um, I believe we are all here um, to, to um, coordinate this and, and answer some more questions thank you everybody for um, for your attendance my pleasure good thank afternoon. you thank you everybody. okay then we close close the session Thank you. <laughs>